Hello friends and not yet friends, welcome back to Mary's Test Kitchen. To make these soft fluffy fritter donuts with bursts of peachy goodness and caramelized edges that perfectly capture the spirit of summer's end, give this video a thumbs up and grab a cup of warm water. I recommend having a kitchen thermometer for this so you don't kill your yeast before we even get started. Also, pre-warm your mixing bowl by rinsing with warm water so the bowl's temperature difference doesn't drag you down either. Let's set up for success. Then you'll add an envelope or two and a quarter teaspoons of instant or traditional dry active yeast. And two tablespoons of sugar to give that yeast a feast to work with right away. And a half cup of all-purpose flour. Mix that up and wait about five to ten minutes. We are checking that the yeast is nice and active. Oh yeah, eating up carbs and making gas. <laughs> now you're ready to add a couple tablespoons of warm, softened vegan butter, two tablespoons of ground flaxseed or chia seeds replacing the eggs usually found in donut dough, along with a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg and a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Is this unnecessary stirring? Yes, sometimes you do things just for fun. In any case, gradually add more flour along with a half teaspoon of salt. Doing it gradually makes it easier to fully incorporate the flour quickly without any pockets of dry bits. Eventually, you'll have a dough too tough to stir, so switch to kneading manually or to your stand mixer. We are about halfway there, but since this is such a sticky dough and you might not know how to do this by hand, I thought I'd show you now. Use a scooping motion with your hands and go around the bowl to grab the dough. And then put it on a nice clean work surface. Out of habit, I put a little flour on the side in case I want it, but you don't really need it. You're gonna grab one side of the dough and fold it over. Scrape the whole thing back up and smack it on the table. This stretches out the gluten and you can fold it over again and again. Keep at it. Over time, it stops sticking to you as much. After about 10 minutes of kneading by hand or six minutes in the stand mixer, form it into a ball and put it back in the bowl. Cover it and set it aside to rise about one hour or however long it takes for your dough ball to double in size. Meanwhile, clean up a bit. And presto changeo, let's get into these juicy peaches. I gave these a quick wash, but the other day a friend told me she doesn't even bother washing peaches, just wipes the fuzz off. Are you team wash the fruit or team wipe the fuzz? Let me know in the comments because it is extremely important to settle this. I ended up using just two large pieces, making about two cups of chopped peach pieces. Set those aside for now, and when your dough is ready, I like to sprinkle a bit of flour around the edges, then use a scooping motion all the way around to separate it from the bowl cleanly. Also, sprinkle some on your work surface before setting your dough down. And we're gonna flatten this out into a squishy little square. Sprinkle flour on top too so your hands won't stick. And press out any squeaky gas bubbles that are still trapped. This helps give our donuts a consistent crumb. But now is this excessive squishing? Maybe. It's also just fun. When you have a square about an inch thick, or like a little thinner, no need to be precise, cut it up into cubes. 
about one inch-ish, as you can see here. Then divide what you have into 12 portions. Have a couple of baking sheets with parchment paper ready and dust them with flour. Take a half portion of cubes and lay them out so they're touching each other. Then add two to three tablespoons of chopped peaches and sandwich them with the other half of the dough portion. Then you wanna smush it together so the dough is kinda wrapping around the peaches like in a chunky web thing. And we have one peach fritter ready to rise. Go on with the rest. It is a little messy, but this is what gives that signature fritter donut shape, full of crispy edge bits around soft, fluffy sweet donut, caramelized fruit bits among the juicier pieces. Fritters are all about texture. Next, we wanna cover them to rise, so I put a couple glasses in the middle of the trays before laying over some plastic wrap like a tent. So there will be lots of room for our baby peach fritters to grow up. Meanwhile, let's mix some ice in. In a small bowl, you'll need a couple teaspoons of lemon juice, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a teaspoon of plant-based milk, and icing sugar. Adding a third cup at a time and mixing it in before adding more allows you to incorporate a total of one and a quarter cups of fluffy icing sugar without regretting your decision to use a tiny, tiny bowl. Now, about 45 minutes later, our peach fritters are puffed up, doubled in size, and ready to fry. Then, since puffed up uncooked fritters are really easy to deflate by accident, I'll cut up the parchment underneath them so they will be much easier to handle. Just be careful and try not to smush them while you're working with the scissors. Now we're just about ready to fry, but first get a place ready for your fresh cooked donuts to land. Finally, heat up about three to four inches of frying oil and make sure there's enough room at the top for bubbling action and get it to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I actually added these donuts a little bit early. Notice the low level of bubbling action? So as always, I recommend not filming and deep frying at the same time or taking photos for your blog or Instagram between video clips for that matter. And I'll show you how these turn out at the end with frying at too low a temperature and for a bit too long as well. But first, let's get these on the rack. With the oil at the right temperature now, see how the bubbles are much more vigorous when I drop these donuts in? Cook them for about a minute or two on each side until they are golden brown. You can add the icing while they're still warm. These vegan peach fritters are just so summery, with bright lemon vanilla icing to bring out the fruitiness, crisp edges of sweet donut and caramelized peach on the outside, with fluffy softness and juicy peach pieces on the inside. Eat them fresh as that is best, or at least on the same day. But if you must, like most breads, you can freeze them after they cool completely. And as promised, I'll show you what happened to the donuts that were fried too long and too low. On the outside, they don't look too bad, a little dark. But inside, as you can see, it's quite a greasy situation. The oil has soaked in quite a bit and it doesn't taste very good at all. So be patient, 
use a thermometer and fry between 350 and 375 to avoid this. And instead make delightfully non-greasy, puffy, soft peach fritters. Maybe this weekend? Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, my friend. I really hope you enjoyed this week's recipe and give it a try. Please subscribe if you haven't already as I'm working on wonderful, cozy fall recipes as we speak. And of course, I'm always open to your recipe requests, so make sure to include the hashtag in your comments so I can find them easily next time I'm searching for inspiration. Bye for now! Mm -hmm.